There are two tour options, Old Decatur and Albany. This tour of Old Decatur is ideal for walking or can be driven if you prefer. Each tour leads you at your own pace by foot or by car through the tree-lined streets of both districts. You may begin, pause, or end at any point. If you follow the maps in numerical order, each loop takes less than an hour. Also, please remember that unless otherwise noted, the buildings are privately owned and can only be viewed from the street or sidewalk. First, a little history. Old Decatur. As you make your way to our first stop in Old Decatur at the corner of Bank and Church Streets, let us share a little history. The Old Decatur Historic District dates back to the town's settlement in 1817. At that time, it was called Rhodes Ferry Landing, after Dr. Henry W. Rhodes, an early landowner who operated the only ferry across the Tennessee River at Decatur. Just north of here is Rhodes Ferry Park, a public river walk park we'll tell you about towards the end of the tour. The city was renamed Decatur in 1821 in honor of Commodore Stephen Decatur. After the naval hero was killed in a duel in 1820, President Monroe directed the town to be named for him. Official incorporation took place in 1826. With a bank, railroad, and river as drivers, Decatur began growing between 1830 and 1860. The Civil War, however, drastically changed the landscape of this community. Those strategic assets made the city prime real estate for Union and Confederate armies during the war. It has been estimated that the town changed hands eight times. In fact, in 1862, the Union troops took Decatur, evacuated the city, burned the railroad bridge, used wood from many structures to build their fortifications, and when leaving town in 1864, burned most of the remaining buildings. It took years for Decatur to recover following the war between the states, as it's known in the South. One of the most important developments in the community's resurgence was the purchase by Louisville and Nashville Railroad Company of track extending from Montgomery to Nashville by way of Decatur in 1871. By 1886, 640 railroad cars passed through LNN's Decatur Rail every day. Just as the government and economy began to rebound, yellow fever hit the area in 1878. The disease killed 51 people, but hundreds more, including the mayor, left town to avoid infection.